Hello, this is Mr. Purcell, and today we're going to be using a, a PHP simplex. I want to show you how to use that in order to solve a problem like this. Maximize z equals 7x1 plus 6x2 plus x3. Subject to, there's two constraints and the non-negativity constraint. You'll notice that we could not have used the uh, graphical method for this. As the graphical method, you can only have two unknowns, two variables, x and y. You can't have, there's not a, you know, a third axis. There's an x-axis, a y-axis, and that's it. So the simplex method is a way to solve linear programming, these maximization or minimization problems where there's more than just two unknowns, okay? And you see the steps in the previous lecture. You saw it being done by hand. And then there's plenty of homework problems where you're just doing part of it. Maybe find the pivot or read the solution or set up the simplex method. But for those where you have to go all the way through it, I'm going to suggest that you use PHP simplex again. We've already looked at PHP simplex for the graphical method. So here we're going to use it with uh, the uh, simplex method. Now their simplex method that they use is a little bit more advanced than what we're doing with the pivot and uh, reading off the solutions. So the important thing when you're using that is just to get the answer. And this will be especially true when you're doing the word problems. You've got to set up the word problems. Then go to PHP Simplex to uh, work them out. I mean, to you know, actually do the number crunching and get the answer and then type it in. So right now, the purpose of this particular problem isn't to go through it completely by hand. Going through it by hand, you might get some really messy uh, fractions in it. That's the way it just randomly changes numbers. But also, uh, just sort of practice it. So let me pull up PHP Simplex again. Hopefully you remember it from using it with the graphical method. I'm going to open a new tab and type PHP Simplex dot com slash en. I'm going to put the slash en so that it'll be in um, English. Okay. Now I'll just click right here. At this point, you've already seen the simplex, basic simplex, done. Now, the simplex you're going to see with this, it's going to be much more involved, okay? But, okay, you see, you have your options. You can either do simplex or graphical. With graphical, there can only be two decision variables. But, you see, we have three decision variables. So, even if you wanted to do graphical on this one, you couldn't. So, there. Now we type in how many variables are there? Well, there's three, x1, x2, x3. How many constraints? One, two. Once again, don't count those neg uh, the non-negativity constraints. So only two constraints. And you can maximize or minimize. Okay. Now let's start going through here. This is the objective function. That's the top one. Z equals 7x1 plus 6x2 plus x3. So I'll just put a 1. Subject to 5x1 plus 5x2 plus x3. I'll just put a 1. And let's see. Is that less than or equal to? Yeah. See, uh, there are... You can... Use the pull down menu if you needed to change it, but it's less than or equal to 30. And let's see, x1 plus 5x2. I'm patching in the second constraint there. I'll put a 1x1 plus 5x2 plus 2x3 less than or equal to 10. Continue, and here they, okay, they want you to make sure you're doing, you, did you write it up? And then they show you the slack, how to write it with the slack variables. They're just using more X's, X4 and X5. 
I always like to use S1 and S2 for slight variables, but okay. And I think I'll just say direct solution. Okay, when you click there, that's going to give you what you need. Let's look. Okay, the optimal solution value is Z equals 42. So you type the maximum is 42 when X1, oh, let me switch back over there. Oops, clicked the wrong place. When X1 is 6, X2 is 0, X3 is 0. Let's see. 6, oops, 0, 0. Hmm. This one's asking for the slack variables, and they're not showing the slack variables there. Maybe we should go back and say continue. Look at how they've set it up so nice. Oh, well. You know what? Maybe the best way to get those slack variables, okay, it's just to put in the 600. Okay? So S1 was up here. That would have been the first slack variable. S2 there. So if I put a 6, 0, and 0, in order to get it equal to 30, I'm thinking that S1 would just be 0. If you put a 6, I'm plugging in X1 is 6, X2 is 0, X3 is 0, and I already have 30. So there's nothing we need to add to get to 30. What about this one here? If I plug a 6 in for X, and a 0 for X2, and a 0 for X3, all I have is 6. How many more do I need to add to get a 10? Well, 4. Okay. Let's check that answer. Okay. Let's go back to that and make sure y'all saw what I did to get the S1 and S2. The first slight variable is the first inequality. The second one is the second inequality. So just put the 6, 0, 0 in, and you already have 30. So you don't need a slight variable there. Remember, the slight variable takes up the difference to get you to that number on the right. Now, if you put a 6 for x1 and a 0 here and here, you'd have 6 plus 0 plus 0. Well, in order to get 10, how many more do you need? Well, 4. So 4 is the slight variable. Okay? Yeah, a nice way, much better than going through step by step like they're doing here. And again, you might say, well, wait, what about on the test? On the test, you don't have any problems where you got to go all the way through. Okay? With finding the pivot. See? Oh, right there. oh well, I guess. So, really, if there is, once you get your solution, you do have to do just a little bitty bit of calculations to get those slack variables. And I hopefully, hope you saw what I did. Just plug in x1, x2, x3 in each one of these, and the slack variables are whatever number you need to get it up to 30 and to get this one up to 10. Okay? Well, thanks for watching, and I really hope you try using PHP Symbolic because it will make your life easier here. Again, you can't use it on the test, but the test problems won't be like that. The problems you'll have on a test will be the ones where you don't actually have to go through all the steps. Like here, what are the slack variables and so forth. And you'll know better about what's on the test when you actually see the uh, review. Okay? Well... Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.